In this video, we will look at how to use device detection and hardware accelerated video decoding to build a better video platform. Video streaming platforms can dramatically improve their viewing experience, increase quality, decrease video payload, and reduce costs by implementing a device aware video streaming architecture. With newer codecs like the high efficiency video coding, also known as HEVC or H.265, great improvements are available if you have a device aware network. The business case provides big improvements for the video user experience plus a reduction in costs. So let's let's uh, step back and, and talk a little bit about uh, how important video is to the internet uh, these days. Uh, Cisco has published some great uh, information about the uh, the role of video on the consumer internet. Let's focus on that today. In 2016, video was about 73% of the overall internet traffic. And in 2021, that will grow from 73 to 82%. Uh, and that accounts for a 31% a cumulative annual growth rate of video. Um, so video is important today and it's going to be even more important tomorrow uh, and anything you can do to make that video transmission more uh, efficient has massive repercussions for the costs of your um, of your your platform uh, to serve video uh, and also the user experience uh, that you're you're generating with your audience some of the things that we can identify with uh, the the tools that we have, Werfel is the tool that we have. The Werfel stands for uh, the Wireless Universal Resource File, and this is a, a tool that Sentra Mobile puts out. And we identify devices, mobile devices, tablets, a whole host of other devices, and we can. Uh, one of the things we can do is is dive into the video streaming capabilities of different devices. So specifically, let's talk a little bit about H.264 and HEVC. So H.264 is uh, <laughs> one of those uh, commonly used video codecs. Um, why it's 264, I don't know, it's, it's after 263. But it's uh, each generation of these has about a 50% uh, efficiency improvement. So. Uh, when you look at HEVC, uh, it, it is about a 50% improvement in terms of the payload. The way they do this, and I won't get into the, the mathematics of it, There's we have some links in the mover report. You can watch videos and, and read up a little bit more about it. But essentially, they look at a frame by frame, frame basis and divide up the, the frames into uh, quadrants uh, or, or sectors and analyzes the changes from one frame to the other and describe those changes mathematically. This has the impact of, of drastically reducing the amount of payload that you need. And they, they use more advanced techniques in this HEVC. And we, we can identify when there's hardware uh, that is uh, supporting this. Um, one of the, because there's so much mathematics associated with uh, video codecs, um, they, they're usually, uh, if you try to run encoding or decoding, it will uh, tax your, your CPU a great deal. Uh, it's not necessarily designed uh, for, for those sort of intensive mathematics and, and video. It can do it, but it, it will run down your battery. Uh, but uh, there are GPUs and, and various other image processors or video processors that are available on certain devices that can make the uh, the uh, rendering, the decoding or encoding of this uh, much uh, much more efficient. So what does HEVC really mean for the end user and for the platforms? Well, it means higher resolution and quality. Uh, if you have a bigger screen, a 4K screen, let's say, the uh, HEVC can, can make use of that. Um, but it also means about a 50% smaller payload. So if you were looking at a video that, say, had was, was 4 megabytes before using H.264, 
now it would only be about two megabytes, um, which uh, you know, when you multiply that times millions of views, uh, it counts for a lot. And it also means leveraging chipset acceleration. Uh, what this means in terms of screen size, what, what we actually deliver back uh, to, to the device once we've identified that it can, can use HEVC is a standard level. So there are these different standard levels that uh, occur, one through six, 6.1, 6.2, and the, the standard continues to evolve. But essentially, the, the higher you get in the standard level, the larger the resolution. Uh, so for example, at uh, standard four, uh, it has the ability to render uh, video at 1280 uh, and at 68 frames per second. Uh, and there are also larger uh, versions that are that are available. And as you as you increase the um, the the resolution and the frame rate gets bigger as the standard level gets higher. But diving into the actual devices that are out there, we get uh, we we paint a picture of the the readiness of uh, the the audience to use the HEVC decoding that might be available on their smartphones. Uh, you might not necessarily want to choose the HEVC codec uh, if, and deliver video that way unless they have that sort of de decoding capability. So on uh, Apple's phones, the iOS phones, uh, they started to adopt HEVC uh, in their chipsets, the, the decoding capabilities uh, a few generations ago. And now 78% of the devices that are out there support HEVC, uh, hardware accelerated HEVC decoding. Uh, on the Android side, uh, it's a little different picture. About 57% actually uh, support HEVC, 43% do not. And um, one of the things that's uh, going on here is that uh, Chrome itself, the browser that usually occurs on Android devices, um, does not support uh, HEVC right now. So you can, if you have an app that has uh, HEVC built into it, uh, you can use it on Android, um, but in natively or in the browser uh, using Chrome, you cannot. Safari does support uh, HEVC. Yeah, and also, um, it, yeah, like you say, you know, on the Android space, this is a little bit more complicated than the iOS space, where there's a uh, uh, you know direct tie between the version of iOS and then uh, there's the Safari browser on it uh, on the device, so we know that it's um, uh, HEVC is um, is supported. But for Android, uh, it's a little bit more. Uh, complicated. The hardware might be uh, might be there. Um, like we'll see in uh, a later slide here. There's some uh, some chipsets that are uh, yeah, featured in uh, newer Samsung devices that do actually support uh, HVC, but uh, but not through the browser. So this is purely a uh, native application thing uh, right. currently. Right. Uh, and Chrome doesn't have. Uh, HEVC uh, on their roadmap uh, yet either. Um, they do have a competing format, the AV1 video format, on uh, uh, on the roadmap. So it's going to be interesting to see where this uh, where this ends. Right, right, right. And let's take a look at the actual support level. So once again, I I, I talked about like when we say that uh, when when Werfel responds back and identifies the. Uh, capabilities of a device, it will, and you request the HEVC decoding uh, support, it'll look at the chipset of a um, of a device and say, you know, from a hardware acceleration standpoint, what, what can we support? And we'll, we'll respond back with a, uh, a level. So for example, uh, at level five uh, on the iOS uh, iPhones, 56% of all the devices that we're seeing in the second quarter of 2018 uh, support uh, level five. And uh, at 5.1, 22% do. So, uh, you know, we can see that, you know, most of the devices 
that are out there are, are kind of in the 5 and 5.1 for the iPhone side. Android is a little bit more spread out. Um, you do see uh, a, a fair number of, of devices. And, and interestingly, you know, they're, they're supporting the, the 6.0. About 4% of Android devices have this, uh, what I'll call it, advanced support right now. Um, on the tablet side, it's a slightly different uh, story. There's, there's actually less hardware accelerated uh, HEVC decoding support on tablets. Um, uh, you know, 78% of iOS uh, I, you know, I, uh, iPads uh, don't support any sort of, of uh, HEVC decoding. And uh, it's about the same for the, the Android tablets. The ones that do are usually, uh, for the iPads, are, are at this uh, level five. So what are the chips that are actually underlying all of this? Um, when we look at uh, specific levels, so for example, the Apple A10 Fusion that uh, occurs in the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, that's one of the chips that supports uh, or or has a, a hardware acceleration capability built into it. Uh, so 34% of uh, of the traffic that we see that is at level five is has this chipset associated with it. You also see some of the Snapdragons and Exynos uh, chipsets outlined here. And when you move up to 5.1, the uh, Apple uh, A11 Bionic is one of the main reasons why there's support for uh, level five. Looking at some other characteristics of the devices that uh, are supporting HEVC decoding, uh, it might be useful for uh, people who are building a, a platform to understand, you know, what what sort of storage capabilities uh, the the chipset. Uh, there's some other things that we'll we'll get into here. So starting with the RAM, uh, looking at level five, which is in the gray here, um, you, you see that the um, uh, at level five, the uh, the well, the, the more uh, advanced the the level is of HEVC decoding, the more RAM you're going to get on a device. So uh, the median for level five is to have three gigabytes of RAM on your device, and as you get to level five point one here in the blue. Um, the median actually shifts up to four gigabytes. And we, we probably expect to see this uh, continue to grow as the capabilities of newer phones uh, get in here. But it's, a, it's an interesting indicator of just the, the, the general uh, underlying technical chipset uh, complexity of the devices are, are progressing as the, these levels uh, progress. And likewise, the screens are, are growing in size. Um, what we've done is we've looked at the, the resolutions of some of the top smartphones supporting level 5 and, and 5.1. And as you can see with uh, level 5, uh, you know, the most common uh, screen size is 750 by 1334, uh, followed closely by 1080 by 1920. Um, but as you shift to the next level up, the, the 5.1, uh, the, the most common format is this 1440 uh, by 2560, which is actually uh, about twice as uh, many pixels as you'll see here uh, at the, the, the previous version. So there's a, there's a uh, evolution going on with the, the screen size, the, the, the pixel uh, ratio also. And then finally, uh, looking at some of the statistics around the costs of these phones. Not surprisingly, um, you know, if you look at uh, green here, all smartphones, there's a wide uh, distribution of the costs of, of these phones. Uh, a lot of devices um, 
there's a, a number of budget devices that are out there that are you know below the $400 mark, um, but a fair number of them are what we'll call the premium devices that are above that level. Um, and you're, if you're looking at a HEVC Excel, hardware accelerated decoding capability, you're much more likely to be uh, dealing with a high-end phone. Uh, so 800 to 900 level. Some of these uh, devices uh, cost upwards of a thousand dollars. So what what does this really uh, equate to for video platforms? Well, you know, video platforms have a, a an interest in trying to uh, make sure their operations are as efficient as possible and as low cost as possible, and that they're serving up an experience, uh, a video experience that uh, is good for their audience. So one of the ways that you can do this is uh, build this device detection so into your video platform network. So at the load balancer level, when the, in, when the, um, when the initial request comes in, you can identify the device and the capabilities of that device and segment out your your streams so that you know if if there is HEVC decoding, uh, it will push it to a server that is designed to uh, make use of that and deliver back the the HEVC. Whereas if uh, if we identify that it's not a device that's capable of this, you might use uh, a different uh, codec H.264, say for example. Um, the net result is that you might be able to push much more of your uh, video payload through a uh, video coding system that is more efficient. And that has several economic benefits. Um, it will uh, probably reduce your, your content delivery network costs by at least uh, 10%. And uh, for medium to large video platforms, uh, this could uh, equate to a large amount of money. So if you want to learn a little bit more about this, we've actually written a white paper uh, called How to Optimize ATV Streaming a Video Across Mobile Devices, and we're more than happy to share it with, with you.